If you're working for a large enterprise with applications running on Azure, there's a high chance that one of those applications is SAP, and therefore you may be using SAP's RISE solution, which effectively is a managed service that runs in an SAP managed virtual network in Azure in a different tenant. And as a network person, you may get pulled into those discussions and want to understand how to connect the world of SAP RISE into your existing environment and maybe how to connect it back to on-premises, etc. So this is normally the page where you would land on, which talks about the integration options. But at a high level here, we've got the red SAP VNet, and then we've got your existing customer hub, customer spoke VNet. This could be VWAN hub, etc., etc. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a, a customer scenario where we wanted this interconnection to happen. But we wanted to insert a firewall in between the red and blue. Uh, in particular, it's a pair of Palo Altos. We wanted to make that as seamless as possible. So we looked at the VMSS space solution with HA ports on the load balancer. So we're going to get into a bit of this and sort of coexist in their existing firewall with a dedicated firewall just for the SAP scenario. So we'll build this and then um, talk about it through the lens of SAP. Probably if you've, if you've worked with Azure networking for a while, there's nothing particularly new here. It's fundamentally VNets talking via a hub with a pair of MVAs running a VMSS scale set, etc. So um, yeah, if, if you understand the story behind all of that, then maybe tune out. But if you would like to see it step by step and understand some of the nuances, etc., and see a demonstration, then uh, stick with it. I'll leave the links in the chat below. There's also the, the official Palo Alto documentation on how they handle auto scaling and they've got templates, etc., and different patterns for it from the internet, going to the internet, east west. We're mainly focused on the east west flow today, and we'll we'll use this lab to to start building that out. So let's let's start walking through the lab. We've got our hub virtual network here. And inside of there, we've got a pre-existing Azure firewall. We've got some spoke VNets. All of the blue bits here, including the Azure firewall, is existing customer infrastructure. Uh, typically, uh, this, this spoke here would go into the hub via the Azure firewall to the other hub. And that's a pattern they've been working with for a while. You know, this could be an existing Azure firewall, could be an existing Palo Alto. The requirement for this customer was, hey, we're, we're going to plumb in this red additional SAP RISE VNet over here. And we'll use cross-tenant VNet peering, which is fully supported now, uh, has been for many years. We'll connect it to our hub and we'll treat it like another VNet in terms of advertising to on-prem, etc. But we want to push that traffic, not through the Azure firewall before it goes to our existing blue applications. We want to deploy a dedicated stack here there's several reasons for this, uh, such as performance, scale, separation of duties, but um, let's just take it as a given that this was a requirement. And let's also take it as a given that we want to have this as a, a Palo Alto functional block, not an Azure firewall in this case. So how do we do this in a scalable, resilient way, which integrates with how SAP RISE manage their virtual networks? So if you want a quick start on how to build this out, I'd recommend starting with probably a combination of Jeremy Wright, who's another network specialist at Microsoft. He's got a base topology here where I've stolen part of his diagram, stolen the AZCLI commands that he provided here, which includes a pre-built Palo Alto XML config, includes the marketplace image, et cetera, for the VM series. And then once you, once you get into the weeds of the Palo Alto config, then you might want to refer to this blog by another Microsoft colleague of mine, Jack Stromberg. And uh, he's built out um, a very, very uh, detailed guide here on, on how to do the step-by-step -step deployment of the Palo Altos. Gets into the load balancer config, gets into all of the juicy details of HA ports and what NSGs need to do what, etc. So really good reference. Check out the, the links below. But let's now compare our policy diagram to the running config in the portal. Let's start off with the top here. A simple component is I've got my spoke to VM. It's got a UDR on the, the subnet where I'm 
firing my default route at Azure Firewall, but I'm also firing the 10.3.10.0/24, which is my VNet range allocated to my SAP RISE environment. I'm pointing that at my load balancer. So in effect, you can think of the default route goes to Azure Firewall, which gets me to things like the internet and also to my other spokes. And then I've got the additional line item, which is more specific, which is a for SAP RISE, go to the load balancer. And the load balancer config here is pretty straightforward. I've got a single front end, so 10.1.100. And there's a health probe here, which is a pole in the, the Palo Alto VM series on the SSH port. Uh, there is some guidance in the Palo documentation that that can cause high CPU churn. So you may be better off doing a health probe at a specific port 80 health page. And again, check out the links below for, for that, but either will work for demo purposes. I've got a backend pool defined, which is pointed to my first instance of Paolo and then the second instance on their trusted interfaces with these IP addresses here. And then a simple load balancing rule, which effectively says uh, load balance everything on every port. So by using this tick box here for HA ports, effectively because it's um, the same load balancer on the way in as it is on the way back, we will ensure flow symmetry. So just to explain that a little bit, it's covered in uh, many of the videos and documents, uh, especially probably John Savile's video covers this best. Uh, if this VM initiates traffic to the VM in the RISE VNet, We'll go to the load balancer. Load balancer will decide, you know, 50 50 chance. Okay, let's send it to Palo Alto 1. It will process the packet, form IP forwarding if the rule allows it. And then when it sends traffic to rise, it doesn't use the load balancer on the way out. It just uh, drops the packet on the wire. The wire forwards it across VNet peering. When this VM here in the SAP RISE subnet responds, it's got a reciprocal UDR. And uh, the UDR could be dependent upon your requirements. It could be just pointing to the customer's VNet ranges back at the load balancer. Or if you have a requirement from RISE to use the existing customer's internet egress point, then maybe you have a default route as well. But check out the, the RISE documentation on some of the internet egress and ingress patterns. Uh, but either way, the, the packet makes its way back from that VM inside of RISE to the load balancer. And this is where the HA ports feature kicks in, right? It doesn't matter which port that packet came in on. Every port here will unravel the hash. So if it's the same uh, port and destination on the way back as the source, we'll unravel the packet and the hash will ensure that that packet goes back again to VM series one, which will have a state table inside of it. Remember, unless we're talking about exceptional scenarios, most of these solutions with VMSSs in Azure they don't share state between the, um, the various nodes. So node one gets it back from the Palo Alto. It's got state of the, the, the first half of the conversation. It goes, okay, that makes sense. I'm going to allow the, the packet, drops it on the wire. And again, it follows VNet peering, doesn't go through the load balancer and makes it way back to the virtual machine there. And um, one of the things that is worth sort of looking at is the the metrics on the the load balancer because when we're doing the testing later of shutting down some of the powers and seeing the failover performance the best way of tracking that is by using the the health probe availability so if you choose health probe status here and then apply splitting based on the backend ip address and i'll change the the timing here to be uh, let's say the last four hours with time granularity. You can see here when I was doing some testing earlier, you can track the different Palo Alto. So 10.1.04, 10.1.05, the red and blue lines representing the health probe availability to each of the Palos. So, and we'll see that shortly when I shut one down, the red line will drop. When I shut another one down, the blue line will drop. But at the moment, they're both pinned to 100, which means they're both online both are legible to receive traffic that comes into the load balancer. So I can look at one of the Palo Alto virtual machines here. And remember, this is a, 
simplistic config in the lab, they're being managed as autonomous devices. Probably in a production scenario, you'd be using Panorama to manage your fleet of Paolo's and to maintain that config sync. But we see here it's got um, a couple of network, network interfaces, management, and it's got a, a trust interface as well. So effectively, I'm using this single NIC. I'm not trying to uh, test any sort of internet egress flows with this, um, with this lab. It's purely an east-west firewall. There's a few basic things in here, which is true for any NBA scenario where, for example, the um, IP configuration of the NIC's got IP forward enable, you've got UDR pointing 00, 0 to internet for management, things like this. Um, I won't belabor the Palo Alto config because that's not really an area that I work in a lot, but uh, it's relatively straightforward. You know, you can log into the, the Palo Alto GUI here. I mean, Jeremy provides a great XML config to get you up and running. Uh, but by and large in here, we've got a very straightforward config of some simple um, security config, which is allowing all traffic from the 10 range to talk to the 10 range. And there's some NAT config if you wanted to test internet egress as well. And one of the important things that Jack notes in his blog is inside of the management policies, you have to allow that, that SSH traffic to come inbound uh, from the, uh, the load balancer. We can also zoom into some of the, the virtual routing config here. If we look here, there's some static routes configured to point out of the trust interface, the single NIC on this VM. Um, if you were running you know, multi-NIC setups, you need to make sure you're pointing the, the 169, the special Azure load balancer address out of the right place. But like I said, I won't belabor the Paolo config. At the moment, this, this Paolo is effectively allowing all traffic to flow. It's acting as an IP forwarding device. But what I really want to show is the concept of inserting a separate firewall between RISE and your existing VNets. And uh, now let's demonstrate the, the failover behavior with the HMA ports VMSS scale out model. So over here, I've got a terminal open to my spoke to VM. So imagine this is your existing virtual machine inside of your environment and you're wanting to test connectivity to the SAP RISE solution. So 10 to 10 I'm going to ping 10.3.10.4. And this, this packet here, as I said, that we talked about the data path earlier, but fundamentally going this way, this way, this way, back to the low balance, so back this way, and then back over here. Okay, so I've got a few windows open here. I've got my client that's got the ping running continuously. I've got my low balance of metrics with my health probe statuses. And now I'm going to come over here, and I've got my Palo Alto 1 virtual machine and Palo Alto 2 virtual machine. So let's turn off Palo Alto 1 and observe the impact here. All right, so after a, a few minutes, you can see that our health probes are starting to go down. So we know that um, the health probe for 10104 is now failing. And that makes sense because if we check the networking of PAN1, we can see that the trust interface got the IP address 10104. If I just stop that running ping there, we can see that, well, no packets were lost at all. So keep that running again. I'm going to uh, reboot the first Palo Alto and then shut down the second Palo Alto and just make sure we see similar failover performance. Okay, the Palo Alto 1 node is back online, as we can see on the health probe, so I'll shut down number 2 now. You can see that machine stop now, reflected in the other health probe going down, the blue line. And again, if I stop the running ping there, no packets lost. And naturally, you want to make sure that, uh, are we even sending traffic to this Palo Alto VMSS pair at all, right? The failover performance is so good. So let's just make sure by leave number two shut down and then also shut down number one. And of course, when there's no members in the pool alive, nothing to forward packets, we will see the ping stop here. So both VMs are shut down now. Our packet forwarding stopped working. We can see that uh, we've lost lots of packets. So let's flip back to our diagram and just um, summarize what we talked about and also show why this pattern was particularly important for the SAP RISE integration scenario. We demonstrated how the load balancer takes care of both flow symmetry for east-west traffic and the failover based on 
the health pro reachability of the Palo Altos. So there are quite a few scenarios where you know you work with partners who host their servers on Azure but need to integrate with your VNet, and therefore you don't have full rights to their tenant. So we can very easily ask the people that manage this environment to configure these UDRs. You set them once and you forget about them. Now, if we were working with the older way of doing NVA load balancing in Azure, that was based on active standby. So you'd have one active node and one standby node, and this would be owning the IP address for, for the period of time where that node is active. And you would have a, a UDR over here saying, okay, under normal conditions, point to this IP address here. And maybe the public IP might float, but the private IP would stay on the actual VM. And this would work under normal conditions, but what if this failed? Ultimately, how those patterns work for active standby designs, UDR failover, is you, you come into this UDR in a failover scenario, and you, you can automate this with functions, etc. You come into the UDR and you say, okay, under a failure scenario, don't point to 10.1.0.5 point to 10.104. But of course, that assumes that you've got the ability to write to this environment. And if, you're, if you've got a separation of duties and RBAC between this one and this one, then that may be complex to implement. Anyway, I hope you found it useful. I hope that gives you some ideas on, on how you can insert separate firewalls or it could be the same firewall between disparate environments within disparate tenants and integrate those into your existing Agile landing zone.